So this is the first smoke method that I tried, and this was dry ice and boiling water. As you can see, it did fog pretty well, um, but it only did it for a few second intervals, so it was hard to uh, be ready with the camera um, when I was trying to take stills, and it, it didn't really show up that well. So I think it was a meaningful test, um, and this was just a preliminary test, as you can see. Uh, I can't change the AOA inside there yet. Um, and this is just one of the airfoils I selected to um, see if it worked. This is another shot of the dry ice. There's a few good puffs there, right there, but overall it was just not as strong as I needed. So I went on and um, tried and researched a new method, which you'll see in a little bit. Now here is the angle of attack stand that I created. Okay, so this is the stand I created for all the different airfoils I'll be testing. This down here is just a scale aircraft stand. Um, and then this is a little linkage I created with a pin that locks everything in place and allows it to freely move its angle of attack around. Uh, that pin will be cut down in the future. And then this is just a RC aircraft servo uh, and a little 1S battery and a receiver that then allows me to use the uh, transmitter to change the angle of attack remotely so that I can be outside the airfoil and be changing this uh, inside. So here's another view of that. So yeah, that, that's gonna work well, I think. And uh, I'll try it out inside the tunnel. Okay, so this is kind of the final setup of the wind tunnel. I've got the transmitter right here. And one of the first airfoils is inside the tunnel and it can um, move around here with the system I've created. So when I uh, pitch up on the transmitter, angle of attack is lowered and increased. So uh, then you see this straw here. This comes back to the new smoke system I've created. So um, here's the straw and we follow the line down here. This is the smoke generator. So inside here is a little tin can, it's right on the bottom there. And it has um, some glycerin and water mix mixture in that. And then uh, we've got a coil in there. You can kind of see the coil, a bit hard to see actually. Um, but inside the coil, here you can see it, there's a, a fiberglass wick and that has the glycerin and water mixture soaked on it. and then the coil is attached outside here to these leads, which then go to a car battery. So when I fire the car battery up, it will heat up that coil and start smoking the glycerin and water. And that smoke will then be propelled by the uh, line here that comes from the compressed air tank. And it shoots the uh, smoke through this hole and like I said, back out and into the tunnel. And then we've got the fan here to blow some air through the tunnel as well. So uh, in the next few clips, I'll probably show some uh, videos of the wing moving in the smoke. So you can see here in this video, the smoke that the glycerin and water is creating is much more prominent and it's a pretty constant flow. You can see the stall angle right there. That's about 17 degrees. Um, and I use that protractor right there, as you can see. Um, to help me uh, measure the angle of attack. And it's a little bit tough to see there because the field of view is obscuring what angle it actually is at, but I've added a little needle to the side of the wing that helps me estimate the angle um, better. So the angle of attack stand that I made is working pretty well here, and I was able to get some really nice pictures, um, which I'll show here in the uh, next clip. Um, and uh, it's a lot easier to kind of dissect the information that this visual representation is giving me. All right, so in part four of my senior project, I will be showcasing more of the data collection side of things. So using the gram scale to generate lift data and then also some of the other airfoils I have and testing those in the smoke. So once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.